Welcome to Comic Book Historians. I'm Alex Grand. Go ahead and click on that red subscribe button down below. Now, today we're talking about 1968. At this point, the Marvel age had really come into its own, all from the mutual visions of Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Steve Ditko. Now, yes, Steve Ditko had been gone by this point in time, but he laid a lot of the groundwork, especially in the Spider-Man and Doctor Strange universe that would then actually take hold and be part of the crucial Marvel universe that was flowering in 1968. And around this time, we have two interesting interviews. The 1968 Castle of Frankenstein interview by Ted White of Stan Lee. And another one a year later in Cartoonist Profiles, again of Stan Lee. We can see from the images in 1968 Castle of Frankenstein that he was sporting his toupee by this point in the decade. This interview has some pretty cool written interaction also between Stan Lee and his second-in-command, Saul Brodsky, where they are discussing a possible art correction of a recently turned-in story from Jim Steranko, who could possibly be around the corner. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Jim Steranko wasn't actually living in New York City when he was working on his Nick Fury S.H.I.E.L.D. comic in Strange Tales. He was actually living in his hometown of Reading, Pennsylvania, either using mail or commuting to New York to drop off some artwork. Another interesting note is that Stan says that Jack Kirby is a great plotter and that Jack essentially makes up the plots and Stan basically just edits. This is really important because you would see that Stan would never phrase things quite like this after Jack Kirby would leave in 1970. Oftentimes in interviews or publications post Jack Kirby leaving, he would actually phrase things differently where he was actually the mastermind behind the creations. When we look at cartoonist profiles, we see a lot of interesting little tidbits. One, for example, was that Stan Lee was sporting the same wig and beard motif. There is also an interesting paragraph where Stan says that the artist is a co-plotter and part writer with the writer and that the main two things artists at Marvel need to know are page length and basic idea of the plot. That way they know what they're working with to hash out the storyline of the panels. He also mentions Jim Steranko, who lives in Pennsylvania, and he's using the phone and mail system to generate and turn in his art at Marvel. This is interesting that Stanley would bring up Jim Steranko in two different interviews, obviously meaning that Jim Steranko was really important to Marvel at the time. Stan also mentions the same of Jack Kirby, who is actually living in the West Coast. At this point, Jack Kirby had moved away from New York to get away from air pollution for his daughter's asthma and living in Thousand Oaks, California. Here is a narrative that Stan would now start to say in interviews, starting around here, where his wife egged him on to write more serious elevated comics and stop trying to break into other media. This is important because Stan would often refer back to this as the reason that he was so creative when Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko were around in the early 1960s. Stan also discusses Martin Goodman giving Stan freedom to edit unless the sales slip and then Goodman will enter the picture. Stan goes on to mention that Martin Goodman is a magnificent analyst and editor. This is also important because in later interviews, Stan would discuss Martin in a different way. He would say that he was proud that Martin did that or proud that Martin did something else but he would never actually compliment him like he did here. Now this obviously has something to do with the fact that Martin was still publisher when this interview was made. In the post-1972 interviews, you would see that Stanley does not mention Goodman in this way or rarely mentions him at all. Really, it's because Martin had already gone away and retired to Florida. Now in the same Cartoonist Profiles magazine, we also have a bonus two-pager where Roy Thomas is actually interviewed. Here he is talking about how he started reading comics at age four and a half, reading all American comics and DC comics, but also avoiding EC comics, enjoying Mad Magazine, enjoying Julia Schwartz as a writer, and meeting Jerry Bales as a fellow fanzine writer, working with Mort Weisinger for a week, and then starting to work for Stan, watching movies and writing comics. It's fun to check out these earlier interviews because we can see that if a subject is asked the same question, oftentimes they answer it differently depending on where they are in the timeline of their lives. Context is, of course, everything. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode here at Comic Book Historians. Go ahead and click on that red subscribe button down below if you did. And we have more coming for you down the pipeline here at the Comic Book Historians YouTube channel.